In the early hours of Saturday, the 26th of April, 1986, an accident occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant that would change the world forever. The event occurred during a late-night safety test, which simulated a station blackout power failure, in the course of which safety systems were intentionally disarmed. A combination of inherent reactor design flaws and supervision of the reactor core contrary to the checklist for the test eventually resulted in uncontrolled reactor conditions. Water flashed into steam, generating a destructive vapor explosion and a subsequent open-air graphite fire. This fire produced considerable updrafts of highly radioactive particles into the atmosphere for about nine days. In the following days and weeks, the radioactive material precipitated onto parts of the Western Soviet Union and across much of Europe. During the accident, steam blast effects caused two deaths within the facility one immediately after the explosion, and the other compounded by a lethal dose of radiation. The resulting Battle of Chernobyl lasted days, weeks, and months. It is understood that 134 servicemen were hospitalized with acute radiation sickness, of which 28 firemen and power plant employees died from the radiation effects. Additionally, it is believed that 14 radiation-induced cancer deaths among this group of 134 hospitalized survivors were to follow within the next 10 years. Amongst the wider population, a further 15 childhood thyroid cancer deaths up to the year 2011 were attributed to the accident. It is unlikely that we will ever know the true final cost to public health resulting from this incident. The struggle to manage and arrest the meltdown of Chernobyl's number four reactor included a truly tense and horrific race against time to prevent the stricken core from melting the concrete base and leaking into the water of the cooling pond system beneath it. Had such an escalation occurred, the resulting steam explosion would have destroyed the other three nuclear reactors on the site, leaving much of the Soviet Union and Europe uninhabitable. This intervention, together with later decontamination efforts of the surroundings, ultimately involved over 500,000 workers and cost an estimated 18 billion rubles. It is known as the Battle of Chernobyl. There are thousands of stories, many of which are just as harrowing and heartbreaking, that involve the brave people, often conscripts, who fought the incident and its aftermath. These people are known as liquidators. To this day, many of them encounter social stigma and a difficult battle to have their mental and physical conditions recognized by the authorities. This unofficial monument to the firefighters and all liquidators was created in the town of Chernobyl without funding from the local authorities. The remains of the number four reactor building were enclosed in a large cover which was named the object shelter and often referred to as the sarcophagus. The purpose of the construction was to reduce the spread of the remaining radioactive dust and debris from the exposed reactor ruins and to protect the damaged structure from further weathering and decay. The original sarcophagus was finished in December 1986 at a time when what was left of the reactor was entering the cold shutdown phase. The enclosure was not intended as a radiation shield, but was built quickly for the safety of the crew still operating the other undamaged reactors at the power station, with number three reactor remaining in use into the year 2000. The larger curved structure visible today is known as the safe confinement and encloses the remains of the reactor along with the original sarcophagus and was completed in late 2017 costing 1.27 billion pounds. This was partially funded by donations from countries around the world and should provide airtight protection for at least the next century. 
Due to the radiation risk to staff constructing the new safe confinement building, it was not possible to build it directly in place. As such, it was constructed on rails, 300 meters or so away from the original sarcophagus, and was slowly moved into its final resting place over several weeks. It is 162 meters long and 108 meters high. Remarkably, it weighs three and a half times that of the Paris Eiffel Tower. It is the largest land-based movable structure ever built. Elsewhere across the power plant site, construction of reactors number five and six were halted following the incident at Chernobyl. The construction work on site was effectively frozen in time as a result of the contamination, complete with the cranes being used. The accident motivated safety upgrades on all remaining Soviet-designed reactors in the same family as those at Chernobyl. The accident also stimulated political change within the Soviet Union that ultimately led to the dissolution of the Union. It certainly contributed to the end of the Cold War. Today, Chernobyl sits within a wide-reaching and protected exclusion zone. Established by the Soviet Armed Forces soon after the 1986 disaster, it initially expanded to an area of 30 km radius from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The zone was designated for evacuation and placed under military control. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone borders a separately administered area, the Palesha State Radiological Reserve, to the north in Belarus. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is managed by an agency of the State Emergency Service of Ukraine, while the power plant and its sarcophagus are administered separately. The Exclusion Zone is often referred to as the Zone of Alienation and covers an area of approximately 2,600 square kilometers of Ukraine. Within this zone, Radioactive contamination is most prevalent and public areas and habitation are restricted. Other areas of compulsory resettlement and voluntary relocation not part of the restricted exclusion zone exist in the surrounding areas throughout Ukraine and Belarus. The exclusion zone's purpose is to restrict access to hazardous areas, reduce the spread of radiological contamination, and conduct radiological and ecological monitoring activities. Today, the exclusion zone is one of the most radioactively contaminated areas in the world and draws significant scientific interest for the high levels of radiation exposure in the environment, as well as increasing interest from tourists. Going into the exclusion zone from the Kiev direction, there are heavily protected checkpoints at the outer limit of 30 kilometers and a further checkpoint at 10 kilometers. It is forbidden to take photographs of the security measures at these checkpoints and the guards themselves. You cannot get into the exclusion zone without pre-registering, and there are strict passport controls. At the 30-kilometer checkpoint, there are small shops that sell drinks and snacks, along with souvenirs for any tourists entering the zone for a day trip, or an overnight stay in the Chernobyl Hotel. Visitors to the zone can expect regular screening for radiation, particularly at the exit checkpoints. This is for visitor safety, and to stop any theft of contaminated items. If your excursion includes lunch at the nuclear power plant, you can expect to have a radiation scan upon entry to the building there too. There are approximately 200 people who have returned to the zone and lived there full time. However, several thousand people are employed within the exclusion zone, particularly at the nuclear power plant. There are several full-time fire stations within the zone. In an area where so much radioactive contamination found its way into the environment, building fires, and especially forest fires, can be further devastating for this part of Europe, with the risk of releasing that radioactivity back into the air. The longer-term legacy of Chernobyl will last millennia into the future. One of the saddest stories relating to the exclusion zone is the number of evacuated and displaced residents of both Chernobyl and the nearby city of Pripyat and the ghost towns left behind. Pripyat was a modern town, founded on the 4th of February 1970 as the ninth nuclear city in the Soviet Union. It was created to serve the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was officially proclaimed a city in 1979 and had grown to a population of over 49,000 by the time of the incident. It is quite remarkable and horrifying to think that the city, just two kilometers from the power plant, was not evacuated until the afternoon of Sunday the 27th of April, 1986, a full day after the Chernobyl disaster. Внимание, внимание. Внимание, внимание. Внимание, внимание. 
Уважаемые товарищи, городской совет народных депутатов сообщает, что в связи с аварией на Чернобыльской атомной электростанции в городе Критики складывается неблагоприятная радиационная обстановка. Партийными и советскими органами, воинскими частями принимаются необходимые меры. Однако с целью обеспечения полной Residents were told they would return home after three days, but they never did. Nature is reclaiming this city, as evidence of human civilization lies in heartbreaking dereliction and decay. Trees and shrubs are taking over and thriving. The haunting silence is prominent here, except maybe for the call of a cuckoo, the grumble of a wild boar, or the distant howl of a wolf. It's a surreal place, peaceful, and post-apocalyptic. Within the zone of alienation, a secret military object existed at the time of the Chernobyl disaster. It is called the Dugger, a Soviet over-the-horizon radar system used as part of the Soviet missile defense early warning radar network. It is a huge lattice megastructure with two antenna. The largest is 153 meters high and 550 meters long. After the death of a tourist who fell from the radar in late 2017, all access ladders were removed. Climbing the antenna is now almost impossible. Two operational dugger radars were deployed, this one near Chernobyl and the other in eastern Siberia. The system seen here operated from July 1976 to December 1989. The dugger systems were extremely powerful, over 10 megawatts in some cases, and broadcast in the shortwave radio bands they appeared on radio frequencies without warning, sounding like a sharp, repetitive tapping noise at 10 Hz, which led to it being nicknamed by shortwave listeners as the Russian woodpecker. The random frequency hops disrupted legitimate broadcasts, amateur radio operations, commercial aviation communications, utility transmissions, and resulted in thousands of complaints by many countries worldwide. The signal became such a nuisance that some receivers such as amateur radios and televisions actually began to use woodpecker blankers in their circuit designs in an effort to filter out the interference. The unclaimed signal was a source for much speculation, giving rise to theories such as Soviet mind control and weather control experiments. However, because of its distinctive transmission pattern, Many experts and amateur radio hobbyists quickly realized it to be an over-the-horizon radar system. NATO military intelligence had already given it the reporting name of Steelwork or Steel Yard. When operational, it was thought to provide approximately 32 minutes warning of any incoming missiles launched from the United States of America. However, it is understood that the system was not actually all that reliable in terms of serviceability and understanding the system outputs. The location was so secret that despite it being visible to inhabitants of the nearby city of Pripyat, the site was marked as an abandoned children's summer camp on the map. In an attempt to misdirect Western espionage, a fake bus shelter was constructed on the road towards the Dugger complex, complete with cartoon characters to enhance the illusion of an old abandoned summer camp once being there. To control and operate the radar system, a small secret village was built, in which 1,000 people lived in barrack-style accommodation. The site also included an army vehicle driving school. Today, the location lays abandoned and derelict with guarded presence. 
It provides another haunting look into a secretive past. Kapachi was a village close to Chernobyl, just southwest of the Pripyat River Basin. After the disaster in 1986, the village was contaminated by fallout and subsequently evacuated. It is now well within the 10-kilometer zone of alienation. Following evacuation by the authorities, all of the buildings were torn down and buried as an experiment in trying to manage the radioactive contamination. This included houses, shops and other amenities. Kapachi was just one village to suffer this fate following the disaster. The only trace of the village today is a series of earthy mounds and a small number of surviving trees which are not part of the local native fauna. Each mound contains the remains of one house and the personal belongings of its occupants. On top of every mound is a sign bearing the international radiation symbol. A war memorial, a kindergarten and one other brick building are the only architectural structures that remain standing in this village. The government did not recognize the fact that these highly contaminated buildings and houses would seep radioactive isotopes into the water table. Burying the buildings drove radioactive particles deeper into the environment. The soil and water surrounding the former village remained contaminated with radioactive materials, including plutonium, strontium-90, and cesium-137. As you can imagine, this polluted the underlying water aquifer. There are many places of interest and intrigue within the Ukrainian zone of alienation. And now, over 30 years on from the accident at Chernobyl, 
they serve as reminders to us of just how fickle life and civilization can be. Sometimes, things can go wrong. The abandonment and the dereliction within the zone help to convey the sad stories to be told. The workers, the liquidators, and the residents. It acts as a widespread time capsule from which visitors can learn and try to understand just what happened there. The impact it had then, and still has today. I recommend a visit to the zone. The scale of the aftermath needs to be seen in order to be believed. To the brave people who were affected by the accident, and those that fought the Battle of Chernobyl, I thank you and salute you. <laughs>